Welcome everyone. My name is Tegan Clary and I head up the marketing team here at Unchained Labs. I'll be your moderator and thanks for joining us today. We will have a Q&A session at the end of the presentation. Um, so for many of you, you already know how to do this, but if you don't, there's a little Q&A button in the Zoom navigation bar. All you have to do is click on that, type in your question, uh, submit it, and we'll try to get to as many of them as we can. Uh, if you do submit one, try not to be anonymous, uh, just in case we might want to reach back out to you uh, and know what question you asked. Uh, but if you don't want to do that, send one in. Uh, but we do want to be able to get back in touch with you if we can't get to all of the questions. And now I'd like to introduce Alex Shepard, our market manager here at Unchained Labs. Hey, Alex, how are you? Hi, Tegan. I'm good, thank you. <laughs> good, good. Great to see you. Uh, bright and green, as usual. <laughs> Um, today, Alex is going to tell you all about how Leprechaun can measure the tighter and fully characterized lentiviruses in any type of sample, whether it's crude or whether it's cleaned up. Um, and what's even more really exciting, and I know Alex and I are both excited about it, is the new ab uh, ability to be able to detect the RNA on board these lentiviruses. So to know that they are structurally complete, the right size, and that the RNA payload is on board. Um, and not to steal any more of Alex's thunder, I'll go ahead and hand it over to Alex. Alex, I'll be back to work with you on the questions at the end, okay? Great, thanks, Tegan. So today, I'm going to show you all how Leprechaun's new RNA kit can serve up accurate titers the intact RNA-containing lentivirus at any stage of your viral manufacturing process. So in comparison to some other viruses used for cell and gene therapy manufacture, lentiviruses are incredibly structurally complex, in part due to the presence of both a lipid membrane and a protein capsid, which encase the RNA genome. And this structural complexity means that there can be lots of other particulates present in your lenti samples, such as free capsid, membrane fragments, and immature virus, alongside your intact virus. This means that getting an accurate titer, which is unaffected by these contaminants, can be a real challenge with current analytical techniques. So lenti analytical techniques are still relatively underdeveloped. The most common methods include P24 ELISA and QRT-PCR, and both of these provide limited information because they are highly destructive and they only look at the single component of the viral structure. They also only analyze the total amount of capsid or gene of interest without actually checking how much of it is inside a viral particle. Transduction assays, meanwhile, provide valuable functional information, but they're slow and painful, taking weeks to get results. And none of these three methods provide any info on what else is lurking in your lenti sample. Other techniques which rely on non-specific particle analysis are capable of detecting and counting single particles but they make assumptions about the cargo without directly checking what's on the surface or what's inside. These analytical limitations means that figuring out exactly what is in your lentivirus sample throughout your manufacturing workflow can be a real challenge. And this is less than ideal because knowing exactly how much intact RNA containing lentivirus you have at the start can put you in the best position to end up with a high quality cell therapy product at the end. So wouldn't it be great if you could look at your sample straight from harvest and identify which batches have the highest titer of intact structurally complete virus and which have the lowest so that you can stop wasting time on preps which are low quality to begin with. Equally, you need to be able to accurately assess the effectiveness of each purification step at enriching for intact virus and removing unwanted contaminants to be able to do successful product development. So wouldn't it be great if there was an answer, you know, some way of answering these more complex lentivirus questions? Well, thankfully there is. Leprechaun is the only platform that can provide complete biophysical characterization of individual lentiviruses, regardless of pseudotype, in any sample. So our new RNA kit lets you count up how many lentiviruses contain both a capsid and RNA from just a few microliters of crude sample. So you can follow Leprechaun straight to the viral titer that you've been looking for. Leprechaun can characterize vectors such as lentivirus and exosomes on up to 16 samples at a time. Just add a maximum of 25 microliters of your sample to our loony consumable, and then sit back and relax while Leprechaun sizes up 
each individual particle with interferometry before using immunofluorescence to check whether capsid or RNA is inside. The new RNA kits come with step-by-step -step protocols and all the reagents you need for easy answers to even the most complex tighter questions without the need for standards or calibration. There are two flavors of RNA kit, VSVG and Flex, so you can get lenty titers regardless of how your lentivirus is pseudotyped. Each, lent, each lentivirus RNA kit contains eight RNA loonies, which are capable of analyzing one sample each. Every loony comes pre-coated with highly specific antibodies against VSVG to capture your lentivirus from even the crudest samples. While there's no need to worry about soluble P24 throwing off your capsid titer, as separate P24 spots capture the free protein, separating it from encapsulated P24. For non-VSVG lenti, the Flex RNA loony lets you customize these virus capture spots from the comfort of your own lab. Just conjugate your custom antibody to the kit provided linker protein, incubate them on the loony, and you're ready to get a pseudotype specific lentiviral titer. Once captured on the loony, each particle is sized to identify whether it's the correct size for an intact, aggregated, or fragmented viral particle. After a brief fixation and permeabilization, fluorescent P24 antibodies then check if a capsid is inside, while the fluorescent RNA dye, Cyto14, confirms the presence of RNA. So in this image, we have VSVG captured particles. Those that contain both a capsid and RNA appear purple due to the co-localization of the red P24 antibody with the blue RNA dye. Those particles that just contain a capsid appear red, and those that have RNA but no capsid are blue. By combining this sizing information with structural info from fluorescent imaging, Leprechaun is able to separate particles into distinct populations. So each RNA kit provides tighter and sizing info for up to five different structural variants of lentivirus, including intact virus, which contains both capsid and RNA, lenti that has a capsid but no RNA, lenti with RNA but no capsid, and empty VSVG shells, which contain neither capsid nor RNA. In addition, particles sized over 130 nanometers in diameter, which are also positive for the envelope protein, are classified as aggregates. So for the first time, you can be confident that every particle that counts towards your lentiviral titer is the correct size, has the correct envelope protein, contains a capsid, and has RNA in it. If we compare a variety of different commercially available lentivirus samples on Leprechaun, we can see that Leprechaun can easily can easily differentiate between samples with different titers. So in this selection of eight samples, Leprechaun identifies titers for intact capsid and RNA containing particles of between 10 to the 7 to 10 to the 11 particles per mil. But what's really exciting is that if we compare the titer of RNA containing lentivirus as measured on Leprechaun with genomic titer from QRT-PCR, we can see that there is a strong positive correlation between the two with an R squared of 0.95 indicating the leprechaun is capable of detecting the viral genome. And this data set contains a, a, a mixture of crude and pure samples. So this correlation holds up even in the dirtiest of samples. So how can leprechaun help you with your lenti manufacturing? Well, in order to assess the effectiveness of your purification process, you need to know exactly what's going on at every single stage. And it's really hard to do with existing analytical techniques that don't give you all the information you require. So for example, we took one sample and looked at it at three different stages of its purification process, at the beginning, the middle, and the end. And if you analyze this sample using ELISA and look at the capsid-based titer, you see a consistent increase in titer at each stage, indicating that the lentivirus is being successfully concentrated by the process. Equally, it's a similar story if you look at genomic titer of QRT-PCR. The final product has the highest titer of viral genome. So taken together, this data set suggests that this purification process is working pretty efficiently. We're concentrating the capsid and the viral genome throughout. However, if we run these samples on Leprechaun, we can see that the story is slightly more complex. So if we just look at the total lenti titer on Leprechaun, which is all VSVG particles that are the correct size, we see a similar trajectory. 
However, if we focus in on the capsid and RNA containing lenti, indicated by the blue line here, then we can see that actually the proportion of this is no higher in the final product than it is at harvest. About 15 to 16% of total particles in this instance, in each case. So what this shows us is that although this specific purification process is really good at concentrating particles that are the same size and density as lentivirus, it's actually really bad at enriching for the intact capsid and RNA containing lenti. So we're basically just concentrating everything. And you can only really tell this if you have the level of, of information that leprechaun can provide. But leprechaun can also help you sift out samples early on in your process and identify the best samples at an early stage. So in this instance, we compared three different batches of lentivirus and again performed a P24 analyzer. With these samples, we see that batch one and batch two look pretty equivalent when we look at capsid titer. Again, if we run these on leprechaun, we can see that the story is slightly more complex. So here on the right-hand graph, the green bars indicate the titer of capsid and RNA containing lenti. So we can see that this is actually a, there is actually a higher titer of these intact particles in batch one compared to batch two. But on top of that, 40% of total particles in batch one are structurally intact compared to only 15% in batch two. So batch one is a higher titer and is more pure in terms of intact particles than batch two. And again, this is information that the ELISA is unable to differentiate between the quality of these different uh, batches because it cannot look at the RNA content of the capsids that it detects. But Leprechaun solves this problem and tells you what's actually going on in these two different samples. Leprechaun can also be used at the end of your process as well as at the beginning. So in this instance, we took two different samples that have very comparable functional titers and again, analyzed them for Leprechaun. And what we can see here is that although the functional performance of these two batches is pretty equivalent, when we look at what's really inside them, there are still significant quality differences between these batches. So batch four, one in five particles is um, positive for VSVG and contains RNA, but lacks a capsid, compared to only one in 20 particles in batch five. And as we've already seen from previous data, being able to remove these um, incomplete and um, not completely formed lentivirus is a real challenge with current, uh, current common purification techniques. So getting rid of these particles can be a real challenge, therefore identifying them early on is important. Now, what impact do these particles have on your cell therapy? Well, we can't know for sure, but what we do know is that they are the same size as lenti, they have the correct envelope protein, and therefore can compete with your structurally complete virus for uptake into the target cell but they're almost certainly not capable of delivering the correct payload as they have no capsids and contain unknown RNA. So may potentially have unintended consequences on the target cell. Therefore, being able to identify the highest tighter and highest quality samples at every stage of your process is gonna put you in the position of having the best quality cell therapy at the end of it. So Leprechaun is linear down to a viral titer of one times 10 to the seven particles per mil making it compatible with samples taken straight from cell harvest without the need for prior, uh, without the need for prior concentration. Crude samples can be run on the instrument after being diluted somewhere between five to 10 fold in our kit provided buffers, while purified samples often require a dilution of a thousand fold or more, meaning that however crude, crude or pure your sample, you'll only require one to two microliters of your valuable lenti prep. Our easy to use software gives you all the results in one go and in one place. Meaning you can sit back and see and get a detailed breakdown of exactly what is in your Lenti prep. With automated data QC and background removal, you can be confident that non-specific signal isn't interfering with your results. And when you finish your experiment with a couple of clicks, you can export an easy to read report, which will give you a complete breakdown of all of your Lenti samples. So take your process and analytical development to the next level with Leprechaun, the only platform capable of showing exactly what's going on in your sample at every stage of your workflow, including how many of your lentivirus particles are missing a capsid, RNA, or both. So for the first time, you can get an accurate titer 
of structurally complete RNA-containing lentivirus from any sample at any stage. So come and find gold with Leprechaun, the unmatched lentivirus titer and characterization tool, and the only platform that can provide complete biophysical characterization of individual lenti particles from just a few microliters of crude sample. No other lentivirus analytical technique does as much with as little as Leprechaun. So thank you for attending this seminar. If you want to learn more about Leprechaun, then please feel free to reach out at info at unchangedlabs.com, visit our website, or ask a question right now. And with that, I'll pass it back to Tegan. Great, thanks, Alex. <clears throat> thanks for taking us through how Leprechaun can provide you know, the real titer throughout any bioprocessing steps, both in crude or cleaned up or um, after any bioprocessing step. I think that's a, it's just a powerful tool that um, I think a lot of people out there probably wish they had. So, um, and I think it's great now that we can do the RNA detection and there, there's a few questions. So we have a handful of questions and a couple of them are related directly to that RNA detection, which I'm not surprised, right? You and I get a lot of questions about that. So let's go ahead and dive right into those. So the first one, um, what steps have you taken to confirm that you've detected RNA inside the viral particle and not RNA free in solution or say stuck to the outside of the lentivirus? Yeah, a really important question there in terms of the in terms of the assay performance. Well, there are three key aspects really. So, firstly, because Leprechaun captures viral particles on their envelope protein. Um, and then we go for an extensive washing process to remove any non-specifically bound particles. We can be confident that any RNA that we do detect is um, co-localized with a viral particle. So we know we're not capturing soluble RNA. Secondly, we've run extensive tests with RNAs and other nucleases um, to digest off any RNA on the outside of the virus. Um, and we see no decrease in the RNA titer of the virus after nuclease treatment. So we're confident that that RNA is actually inside um, our viral membrane. Um, and then thirdly, uh, we also see a very strong time and temperature dependence with our staining. So the uh, higher the temperature and the longer we incubate the virus with the RNA dye for, um, the more RNA staining we get until we hit that plateau. Uh, and really based on the literature, this fits with the idea that it takes time and energy to get these small molecule dyes like Cyto14 inside the P24 protein capsid to bind to that viral DNA. Um, so I think really those three reasons, plus you know, we showed the, the correlation data there with the QPCR, which is yeah. also I think some really um, reassuring data that we are picking up RNA inside these viral particles. Right, great. Um, uh, another one kind of related to that. So are you, are you sure that the population without capsid but with RNA is real and not some artifact of the assay? Yeah, so again, I think this is a really interesting population and one that hasn't really been studied very much before, um, in part due to the fact that you can only really pick it up by using a single particle analysis technique like Leprechaun. So ELISAs and QPCRs can't see it because they're looking at total capsid or RNA content and not the structure of individual viruses. Um, but yeah, we are confident that this is a real population. Uh, again, we've tested a wide variety of uh, commercially available lentivirus samples. And in each case, we've made sure that this assay is fully optimized. So we're not undetecting the capsid content. Um, you know, we've titrated the permeabilization reagents we use and the P24 antibodies. So we know we're getting maximum capsid detection. Um, and therefore, you know, if there's capsid inside these particles, we're detecting it. And then combined with the nuclease experiments that I just mentioned, again, we're very positive that the RNA that we're picking up is inside these particles. And therefore, if we do see particles that have RNA but no capsid, I think based off of all of the um, samples we've tested and the validation experiments we've done, you know, we're confident that this is a real population that does exist. Right. Okay, great. Um, and then a, a different a different question about crude versus kind of purified, but do you see any reduction in sensitivity or reproducibility of the assay in crude samples compared to pure? Do we see any kind of, you know, I think when uh, most people are, are probably interested, is there a background that uh, caused by dirty samples that's going to change sensitivity or the ability to, to see things? Mm -hmm. No, so you know, the really cool thing about Leprechaun is the fact that we can perform this really high quality analysis in crude samples. And 
you know, as I said, we have a specific capture step and we then do a series of washes uh, to remove uh, non-specifically bound particles. So you know, the linear range of the assay is unaffected by the sample purity. And the percentage CV for viral titer remains below 5% for both crude and pure samples. Um, so we don't have any interference from non-specific signal, even in really dirty crude samples. Okay. And then Alex, one, one last question, and I'm, I'm going to add a little bit to this one. Okay. Um, so first question was, can the system be used to study other viruses? Um, and along that, along those lines, we've been asked, I think for a while, um, for the last year about, okay, VSVG kind of the natural pseudotype, and then people are doing targeting using kind of more custom or different pseudotypes. Um, maybe number answer the first one, which is can it be used for other viruses? And then secondly, what, what do people need to bring to the table um, to be able to use Leprechaun for their kind of special lentivirus with proteins on the surface that are for their indication or for their targeting? Yeah, so we, um, so for the um, other virus question, we have, um, in addition to our lentivirus and our exosome applications on Leprechaun, we do have a custom application. So we have um, these flex kits, which allow you to put any antibody on the surface of the loony to function as a capture antibody. So as long as your other virus has um, some surface protein, envelope protein that you can capture it on, and you have uh, an antibody against that protein, um, then we should be able to capture it on the loony. And then the only other requirement really is that your virus is sized somewhere between 35 to 200 nanometers, which is the sizing range of leprechaun. So if you have a virus in that size range, say um, you're a coronavirus of some sort or HPV or an another retrovirus, um, if it's in that size range, you have an antibody against the envelope, then um, we can analyze it on leprechaun. And we do have a specific program in the software to help you with that analysis. Okay. And in terms of the other lentivirus pseudotypes, um, as I said, we have a flex version of our RNA kit, which um, it comes with all of the same stuff, but just a slightly different loony. To use that, again, you just need an antibody against the um, pseudotyping protein that is present on your lentivirus. Uh, we can then, uh, well, then you in, in your own lab um, are able to conjugate that onto the surface. That's a process that takes about one to two hours, um, but most of that is, is incubation time, so it's pretty hands off. Um, and then once you've done that, it's exactly the same as our standard workflow. So the only requirement is to have an antibody of some sort that we're actually able to use as capture. Okay, great. Two, two more uh, questions came in. We'll hit these and then um, we'll wrap up for everybody. The first one, is the cyto 14 RNA probe specific for use with the lentiviruses? And you met, you just mentioned that we, you know, people could work with other viral types with uh, leprechaun, but could they do that same assay, or would it be something that we, you know, wouldn't wouldn't necessarily guarantee it would work because we haven't worked those out for different viruses? I think that's the question. Yeah, so we've really focused on lentivirus in terms of the validation of that RNA assay. Um, so you know, in theory. Uh, Cyto14 is a, a general cell permeable RNA dye, so um, you know, it can go through lipid membranes. Um, it should be able to stain RNA content um, of other viruses or indeed DNA, because it does also bind to DNA. Um, we haven't validated any of that, so we can't guarantee that performance, um, but you know, it is theoretically possible. And you know, we know that that dye works well with the, um, the filter set on Leprechaun, so from a physical performance, it'd be fine. Uh, there may be some assay development required if you want to um, follow that process for a different type of virus. Right. Yeah, I think that's one to contact us about and talk to our team. So if somebody's interested in that, we, we would be happy to discuss it with you and um, talk about how that might work. Um, okay, last one, Alex. Uh, I think this is a this is a very open ended question, but let's see let's see what you think. But how how would someone integrate this assay into their Lenti development program? Where where would they where would they benefit most from bringing a Leprechaun tool the tool into that process? I mean, as you say, um, <laughs> pretty open ended, but I think there are you know, several possible places here. I mean, first off. Being able to actually kind of, as you said, screen out samples at step one of your process. So, you know, if you're doing some, um, uh, you know, if you're doing some assay development and, and you want to kind of not necessarily take every single one of your samples through to running a functional assay on it, which you know, as we know, is 
at cost and time and money, then by being able to screen earlier in your samples, you know, you know that if you have a lot of particles in there, which do not contain RNA, for instance, and don't have capsid, um, then those particles aren't going to do anything on your cell-based assay. So you know, if you can identify those high titer samples earlier on, then you can just focus on those, purify those, and use them on your um, end goal functional assay. So it should be able to save you time and money in terms of not um, having to purify every single sample. Um, again, I think one, one thing we showed um, in, in this slide set is the fact that there is probably a lot of um, process development work that can be done to really optimize these purification technologies for lentivirus and to again ensure that a higher percentage of your batches are going to be good quality at the end. Um, and then finally, really that, that end stage where you're doing your final QC, um, you know, obviously in the last week or two, there's been a lot of um, focus in the cell therapy world with um, the FDA's um, you know, announcement in terms of the um, black box requirements for CAR T therapies um, due to the hematological malignancies that can occur. Now, you know, th there's a lot of factors that are kind of that, that contribute towards those effects of CAR T therapies. But at the end of the day, you know, stage one, if you start with the highest quality lenti to make your CAR T, and then do all of your CAR T quality checks that you're doing downstream anyway then you're going to have a higher quality cell therapy at the end of it. So, you know, I think generally the questions around quality and performance of cell therapies, there is room here to perhaps step up our lentivirus analytics and focus on that quality of lenti as well as on the, on the quality of the final drug product. Because if you have the best stuff going in, then you're probably going to have the best stuff going out. And right. Leprechaun can just shed a lot of light on that whole process with stuff that you may not realize is going on at the minute. Okay, great. There are two other ones that came in. We're going to hit them. Uh, first one, are the assays compatible with the regulatory aspects of product release? Right. So kind of are these, you know, uh, regulatory ass type assays? So, I mean, we give you information about several CQAs in terms of tighter and purity of your um, lentivirus. Um, you know, at the minute, um, you we do not have 21 CFR part 11 compatibility on Leprechaun. It's something that certainly um, will is interesting for the future. Um, so at the minute, it's not um, you know, a GMP environment, but um, you can use it a lot um, upstream in terms of, of monitoring those CQAs earlier on before you get to that release phase. Yeah, I you know I answer this question in the same way. With uh, some of our instruments have 21 CFR uh, part 11 tools in them. Uh, it's, you know, it's possible we would add those to Leprechaun in the future, but, you know, you can work with our team to talk about how to take those, the, as Alex said, those CQAs and kind of document them in a way that you, you could put them into a, that environment with, with, not with necessarily the, the tools in the software, but it's still possible. So you just, if you're interested in that, talk to us about that. Um, and then last one, this is a good one, which is, um, will, will this, the, um, Will this be accompanied with software update needed to quantify RNA, P24, VSVG, non-VSVG pseudotypes? Like, are our current users going to get access to a new software update, um, and you know the ability for them to have the ability to run these new kits? Yeah, absolutely. So um, there will be a software update coming up very soon, um, which will um, make um, enable all current Leprechaun customers to, to run these kits um, and to analyze the data. So you know, just as our current software tells you the exact con uh, the, the exact title of capsid containing lentivirus and soluble P24, we'll have um, similar outputs for these new kits. So you'll get the concentration of all of those five different populations that I mentioned, the percentage of your particles that have capsid and RNA, soluble P24, and all of the sizing information. So yeah, you know, any existing Leprechaun customer to look out for a software release email from us in the next couple of uh, weeks and you will have access to all of this. Yeah. And if you want any, uh, whoever asked that question, if you want any information in advance, contact us and we'll provide what we can now. So, okay, Alex, thanks for uh, fielding all those questions or a bunch. I appreciate everybody asking those. Um, and again, thanks for a great presentation and telling us about the capabilities and new capabilities of Leprechaun. Um, again, thanks to everybody who joined us today live. We appreciate that. Um, if you'd like to have a deeper conversation or dig deeper into Leprechaun with one of our team members, 
Um, all you have to do is reach out to us at info at unchainlabs.com. Alex had already mentioned that, but info at unchainlabs.com or jump on our website, unchainlabs.com. Uh, you can find Leprechaun uh, quickly there through our navigation and check it out. And again, just reach out to us if you want to learn more. Um, we would love to connect with you and talk about your process for making lentiviruses and see if we can help you. Um, so again, thanks for attending our webinar today, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.